Commissioner Weinberg. Here. Mr. Soroka. Here. Mr. Wolpin. Here. Mayor Weissman is absent. You have a quorum. Thank you. I'd like to ask our Chief, Chief Steinberg, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty, liberty, and justice for all. The first order of business is the election of vice mayor. Uh, is there a nomination? Motion yes. for nomination. I'd like to nominate Bob Shelley. Second. Second, right. There's second. We have a nomination for Bob Shelley as vice mayor, made by Commissioner Holzberg, seconded by Commissioner Narotsky. Can I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Holzberg? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Mayor Weissman is absent. The motion passes. Okay. Okay. Uh, with the city manager, see if there's any deletions or additions to the agenda. There is no changes to the agenda. Okay. And we got a special. Present. What's that? We have a special present. Yes. Uh, there's an employee service award now. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to recognize an employee that has achieved the milestone with the city for uh, 10 years of service. And I'd like to recognize Michelle Augustine. Come on up. She's a police service aide. I'd like to ask the members of the commission if there's any uh, commission that would like to remove an agenda item from the consent agenda. No. Okay. If not, we call for a uh, approval on the consent agenda by the uh, roll call, please. I need a motion on the floor, please. Motion. Second. Commissioner Cohen. Yes. Commissioner Holtzberg? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Weissen is absent. The motion passes. Thank you. Um, moving on to the quasi judicial proceedings uh, with the city attorney. Please proceed with that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. This evening, under item seven, we have items seven A, B, C, and D. Uh, each is a quasi-judicial item. In a moment, we'll ask the city clerk to administer the oath to all persons who desire to offer testimony uh, in uh, any of these uh, four items, A, B, C, D, and following which we'll proceed on item by item. We'll read the resolution and have a public hearing on each. All persons who desire to uh, offer uh, testimony uh, shall do so uh, under oath. And the uh, quasi-judicial procedures of the city are applicable. The quasi-judicial statement as set forth in the agenda is hereby incorporated into the record. At this time, if we can have the city clerk administer the oath to any and all persons who desire to offer testimony on any of the quasi-judicial items 7A, B, C, or D. If you will be testifying, I need you to stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in at this time. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Mr. Vice Mayor, the first item is item 7A, a public hearing on a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, approving signed variance for a city national bank on property located at 2999 Northeast 191st Street, City of Aventura, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Joanne. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I've been sworn in. I would like to enter the staff report into the record. The applicant, City National Bank, is requesting a variance from Section 
191J2C of the City Code to permit one 343.45 square foot wall sign on the north elevation of the Aventura View Office Building at 2999 Northeast 191st Street where two wall signs measuring 186 square feet each are permitted by code. And staff is recommending approval of this assigned variance application. I'll put up a location plan. The property is located at the intersection of Northeast 191st Street and Northeast 29th Avenue. Uh, this uh, building is immediately to the west of the, of the government center. <clears throat> I'd just like to point out that this location plan that I'm presenting right now is, is different. It's been revised from the Exhibit 2 that's in your report that had the location circle here. This is the corrected um, location plan. <laughs> And here's an aerial site. This is the government center, Layman Causeway, and the site, the office building site is here. Um, <clears throat> the proposed sign is on the north elevation of the building. It will say City National Bank at the top of the building and this elevation faces the Lehman Causeway. Um, it's a 10-story office building and the sign proposed at the 10th story. Um, the applicant has proffered in its letter of intent that no future uh, variance will be requested to allow more than this one wall sign unless the city code is amended in the future to allow more wall signers than is allowed at, at present and unless the um, this wall, this wall sign, if, if approved, is, is removed. Um, staff has evaluated the application using the criteria for approval of sign variance in Section 31191M8 of the City Code and finds that it does meet the criteria for approval. The one requested wall sign at 343.45 square feet is less than the 372 square feet that would have been allowed by code for two signs. So the, it, the one sign is less area than the code permits for two. Staff recommends a, uh, approval with the following conditions. That the sign substantially comply with the plan that's submitted with this application. And the next condition is, is uh, to provide that this will be the only wall sign on the building and the language of the condition has been clarified to, to confirm this intent. Um, the condition reads that as, as proffered by the applicant and as authorized by the property owner, no future variance will be requested to allow more than one wall sign of approximately 344 square feet to be affixed to the building at a height of six to 10 stories high unless the code is amended in the future to allow more wall signage than is presently permitted by code or unless the 344 square feet wall sign is removed. The last condition is that the approving resolution be recorded in the public records of Miami-Dade County at the applicant's expense and that a recorded copy be provided to the city prior to issuance of this uh, signed permit. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Vice Mayor, at this time you could ask the commissioners to uh, for a motion on this right. resolution. Yeah. Uh, do I have a motion to approve this by any commission? Second. Okay. Uh, moved by Howard Weinberg, second by Terry Holzberg, Commissioner Holzberg. Okay. Are there any comment? Anyone that has any questions from the public? Any questions at all? We'd like to open this up to the public if they'd like to speak on this behalf. Please state your name for the record. Hi, good evening. Marissa Amuel with Ackerman. Our offices are at 1 Southeast 3rd Avenue. We represent the applicant, City National Bank, um, who's a tenant of the office building located at 299 uh, Northeast 191st Street. Um, we support staff's recommendation and are in agreement with all the conditions. Um, the one thing we just wanted to to note is that the City National Bank has been a long-standing tenant of the neighboring building where 
they've had two existing signs, each approximately 656 square feet. Um, and so we will be going from a total of 1,300 square feet and requesting one new sign, as Ms. Carr stated, of 344 square feet, um, and therefore will be in greater compliance with the code. Um, again, we, we are, we are um, in support of staff's recommendation and the conditions and would respectfully request your approval. And we're here as well if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public? If not, we'll close the open and we'll bring it to the commission. Does any of the commissioners have any questions for the applicant or for Ms. Carr? Commissioner Weinberg? I was just, it, did the bank move next door? Okay, that's why I was confused. Is it done? First week of December, okay. And also, um, is that a new City National Bank logo? Yes, sir, it is. Very nice, I think. I'm not the one to ask for logos, but it looks nice. It's colorful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mr. City Manager, if I may, normally there would be two signs available at a lesser signage size, and what they've done is they've increased this one by one and then eliminated the other one? Okay. Okay. Are there any other comments from the Commission? Okay. Would you please call the roll call? Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Holtzberg? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Weissman is absent. The motion passes. Okay. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to ask the City Attorney to read the third resolution to be considered. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Item 7B, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, approving sign variance for a directory sign measuring 208 square feet, where a directory sign measuring a maximum of 32 square feet is permitted by city code for the nine-story Optima office building at 21500 Biscayne Boulevard, City of Aventura, and providing for an effective date. Could I ask the city clerk to swear in anyone who wishes to speak? Uh, excuse me, uh, we did the swearing in advance for all of the items. Oh, okay, I apologize. Uh, so that'll cover that. And at this time, Mr. Vice Mayor, you could ask for a motion yeah. uh, on the item. Thank you. Motion by Commissioner Cohn. Second. Second. By Commissioner Landsman. Okay. Would you please? Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I've been sworn in. I would like to enter the staff report into the record. The applicant, Optima International LLC, is requesting variance from section 31191J5 of the city code to permit one directory sign measuring 208 square feet, where one directory sign measuring 32 square feet is permitted by code for the Optima office building at 21500 Biscayne Boulevard. And staff is recommending approval of the sign variance application uh, put up by uh, location plan for you. This is the Optima office building on the west side of Biscayne Boulevard at our north city limit. This is Biscayne Boulevard, northeast 214th Terrace, and the building um, fronts on Biscayne Boulevard. Um, the main building at, the, at Biscayne Boulevard frontage, the uh, attached garage, and the second building on 214th Terrace. This is the one with the elevators going up? Escalators, I mean? That's correct. Yeah, the escalators, yeah. And this is a rendering of the front of the building. This is where the, the directory sign is proposed. It's a marble column <coughs> facing uh, Biscayne Boulevard. I'll show you a close-up. There you can see it more clearly. This is where they propose to put all the tenants' names. Oh, I'm sorry. And the uh, the, uh, the column area is uh, it's uh, 9.33 uh, feet wide and 22.29 feet long for a total of 208 square feet. So for this building, the city code uh, permits two wall signs at 80 square feet each, or 160 feet total. 
one monument sign at 48 square feet and one directory sign at 32 square feet. If you total up those uh, four signs that are permitted, it comes to 240 square feet the, uh, where the requested sign is 208 square feet. So the applicant has proffered to give up all the wall signs, the permitted wall signs, the monument sign, and any other directory sign. And this will be the only uh, sign, a tenant sign for the building. Uh, staff has evaluated the application using the criteria for approval of sign variances in section 31-191-M8 of the city code and finds that it does meet those criteria. The one requested directory sign at 208 square feet is less than the 240 square feet of wall signage, monument signage, and directory signage that would be permitted um, by city code for this office building. The staff recommendation is subject to the following conditions of approval. That the sign substantially, that the, uh, per, the permit plans for the sign substantially comply with the plans submitted with this application. That is proffered by the applicant, the proposed 208 square foot directory sign is in lieu of the monument sign and wall signs that are permitted by city code for this a nine story office building. And no wall signs and or monument sign will be permitted for this building in the future. The last condition is that the approving resolution be recorded in the public records of Miami-Dade County at the applicant's expense, and that the recorded copy be provided to the city prior to issuance of a signed permit. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, would the applicant like to make uh, any comments regarding this? For the record, my name is Alan Rosenthal. My office is One Aventura. Um, my client is here with me tonight. His name is Ariel Bromberg. He is the developer and the architect for the building. And I invited him here because I thought I was going to make this PowerPoint presentation to you all for about 30 minutes or so and be able to bill him for all of that and charge him a lot of money. But every time I come here, Joanne's report is always better than whatever I'm going to say. Don't, don't let us so stop I just you. Don't let us stop I, you. I would just like to adopt her report. <laughs> And so uh, I've waived my fees and all of that stuff. So we'll, we'll, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, it's open to the public. Uh, does the public have any questions that they'd like to ask of the applicant or regarding this issue? If not, we'll close the public. And do any of the commissioners have any questions regarding this issue? I do have one. <laughs> What is the material that will be utilized for the sign? Is this going to be etched into the stone or? No, it's, this, this is clad in stainless steel. The column is a concrete column that is clad right. in stainless steel. What's going to be attached are uh, plastic lucite, lucite, lucite panels that will be attached to the wall. Uh, there are some larger panels up on top and some smaller ones on the bottom. They're mostly tenants in the building that are either Fortune 500 tenants or large floor tenants that have taken an entire floor. So this will be for everybody in the building or no, just no, no. certain? Just certain people in the building. I see. And this will be lit up? No. Just, just from the exterior. From the exterior. There's nothing behind it. There's no... There's, so there's, there's no, no lighting on it at night? Okay. And candidly, at 45 miles an hour, if you're looking where you're going, Unless you're really, 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 really looking, you can't see these okay. signs. But in keeping with the desire of the applicant, who is um, one of the few people that I've met in my lifetime who is willing to do only the best and wants only the best, he'd rather have what he wants and what is more attractive than whether or not it's really a glaring lighted sign outside. No, I think the building is beautiful, and the idea and the concept of the signage is excellent. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. And it's nice to call you Mr. Vice Mayor. <laughs> you can bid your client anyhow. <laughs> okay, if there's no other questions, call the roll call, please. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Holtzberg? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor, Mayor Weissman is absent. The motion passes. Thank you. Uh, City Attorney, would you read the fourth? Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Item 7C, resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, granting conditional use approval to allow lot coverage of 55.24% 
for a medical office development located in the medical office MO district where maximum lot coverage of 40% is permitted by code and to allow floor area ratio of 2.0 where maximum floor area ratio of 1.50 is permitted by code for an office building development to be constructed pursuant to the city's green building program located at 21291 Northeast 28th Avenue, City of Aventura, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion to approve is by Ms. Commissioner Cohn. A second? Second. By Commissioner Wynarski. Mm -hmm. Joanne, please. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could you do me a favor before? Yes. Would you explain slightly to the public and to us what green means in terms of that being part of the variance we're requesting to be approved? The City um, Commission in 2009 passed a green building program, and these are um, buildings that uh, conserve water, energy, materials, uh, use special um, uh, heating and um, air conditioning units that, that are energy efficient and, and um, that these criteria are all set in either the U.S. Green Building Council um, checklist for certification or in the Florida Green Building Coalition criteria and that's what they must follow and it's all about conserving energy and material resources so the quality of the building obviously is far greater than under normal conditions yes and I believe our previous applicant complied with that even in excess of the goal is that correct that's correct that was a lead platinum that's right. the highest level you can attain that's great okay thank you thank you I've been sworn in would like to enter the staff report into the record the applicant, Aventura Medical Center, LLC, is requesting conditional use approval pursuant to Chapter 14, Article 6, Green Building Program, and pursuant to Section 31144F2K of the City's Land Development Regulations to allow lot coverage of 55.25%, where a maximum of 40% lot coverage is permitted by code, and to allow a floor area ratio of 2.0, where 1.50 is permitted by code for proposed medical office building development at 21291 Northeast 28th Avenue. The staff is recommending approval of this application. I'll put up the uh, location plan and aerial. I think it's great when they do these green buildings. The, this is a vacant site. It is 1.63 acres, um, just north of the hospital on, at the corner of Northeast 28th Avenue and Northeast 213th Street. And here's the aerial. This is Biscayne Boulevard, Dixie Highway. Here's the hospital. This is the public storage building. The lot is right here. It's a vacant lot right now. now the, the owner is, is proposing to construct an 11 story, 120 foot tall, 142,112 square foot building. It fronts on 28th Avenue with an attached parking garage that has access from Northeast to 13th Street. And I'll show you the building rendering. This is the um, front entrance that you're seeing on 28th Avenue where the lobby is. This is the southwest. My apologies. This is, this is the um, rear. This is the lobby entrance. This is a roof um, a level rendering uh, one of the green building elements that they're going to be putting in this, in this building is a roof garden. They have a, t a cafe in the building and they'll be growing uh, the vegetables and other fruits and things that they need for the cafe in this roof garden. And th those are credible points under the green building program. And they'll also have a walking trail up on the roof. Um, there'll be offices and parking spaces on the first and second floor, then five levels of parking and four levels of office space. 
Uh, the building is designed to achieve LEED gold. So it, go, it goes LEED certified, silver, gold, and platinum. So this is at the third level of gold. Um, based on the U.S. Green Building Council standards, the applicant has registered the building and provided the LEED checklist indicating the design elements that, that are proposed to, lead, to achieve that LEED gold standard. Um, the applicant will also be dedicating road widings to the city uh, both along Northeast 28th Avenue and Northeast 213th Street and will be uh, uh, constructing road improvements that are shown on the approved plan. Could you show that on the map, those roads, please? On, this is Northeast, this is Northeast 28th Avenue. They will be dedicating a 25-foot road widening here. And Northeast 213th Street right here across the frontage, uh, the, uh, the um, side of the property is now uh, dirt and gravel. So that needs to be completely re uh, constructed with uh, asphalt mm -hmm. and sidewalks. <laughs> The road widening on here is about uh, 17, 18 feet, and they will be dedicating that to the city as part of their uh, approvals. Thank you. Um, so the applicant is requesting under the, the green building program that's enacted, 55.2% uh, lot coverage, where normally 40% is allowed by code in the medical office district. Um, that, so it's about 15.24% more than the 40%. The green building code says you're, you can apply for, for this extra lot coverage through the conditional use approval, but you need to provide the green rooftop amenities and Florida friendly plantings in an amount equal to what the increase in, in lot coverage that you're requesting and the applicant has done so. That's the rooftop. That That's right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Florida-friendly plantings on the site. There's a, 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 a plaza area um, for the office building that's also uh, landscaped. Mm -hmm. okay. And as well with the um, green building program, the applicant will be required to enter into an agreement with the uh, and covenant with the city. It will contain the lead checklist showing all the design elements that will be incorporated into the building to achieve the lead gold standard. Um, that um, attainment, that level attainment is to be guaranteed by a bond or a letter of credit that is provided to the city. 5% of the construction costs, it's returned to the um, applicant when the lead certificate is issued. If it is not, then it is forfeited to the city. So that, that's the, the trade-off between the, the uh, uh, incentives and uh, getting the lead gold done. Uh, the staff has evaluated the application using the criteria for approval of conditional uses in Section 3173C of the City Code and finds that it does meet those criteria. So staff is recommending approval of the application with the following conditions. The first is that the uh, plans to be submitted for building permits substantially comply with the plans that have been submitted with this application for conditional use approval, that building permits be obtained within 12 months of the date of the approval, failing which the approval will be deemed null and void. However, the City Commission uh, and Code provides for this. that They may, by resolution or motion at a regular hearing, grant up to one six-month extension of time to obtain a building permit on written request by the applicant and um, on showing of good cause. Any discontinuation of the approved conditional use for a period of 180 consecutive days shall constitute abandonment and shall rescind the approval. Uh, before issuance of a building permit, um, the applicant needs to enter into the um, a green building agreement and covenant, um, provide to the city the performance bond or other security approved by the city manager and city attorney and in the amount of 5% of the construction costs to guarantee attainment of the LEED Gold uh, certification and uh, to record in the public records of Miami-Dade County the road widenings on, uh, to the city on Northeast 28th Avenue and Northeast 213th Street. 
And before issuance of a temporary certificate of occupancy or certificate of occupancy, the applicant is to complete all the road improvements that are shown on the approved plans for Northeast 28th Avenue and Northeast 213th Street. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Does the public have any questions? If we'd like to open it up. Are you the applicant? I am his representative. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the commission, staff. Thank you. Uh, Mickey Murrow from the law firm of Burke Howard Dylan Fernandez here on behalf of Aventura Medical Center, LLC. As I was sitting in the audience, and even though I'm here every month, it seems like I, I was noticing the Florida Green Local Environment banner, and I was seeing how relevant that was today. Um, this is, of all the applications I've done here, this is the first time that I've done one of these conditional uses for green incentives. And it was really cool to get to know about this application and to see that this commission in 2009 took the lead, and probably why you have that banner up there, in adopting a program that not only incentivizes responsible green development, but also does it in a way that's responsible to the city. And this application where you have uh, a deficit of, I guess, an increase in 15% in lot coverage, you're actually mitigating, mitigating it here by over 18%. So even though it's not green on the ground floor, you're getting three and a quarter percent more green elements on the roof and in the landscape plaza. So. It, this is exactly the kind of application, and, and like the one the gentleman before us, where you're taking the incentives provided by the city code and resulting in a better building that works better with the environment, that's more energy efficient, and really will, will last the test of time. So with that, we, we would appreciate your approval today. We're here to answer any other questions you might have, and we agree with all staff's conditions and look forward to getting this building done. Thank you. Does anyone on the commission have any questions? I just have a comment. Please, Commissioner this is, Thank you. This is a great initiative. Uh, I hope to see more initiatives like this in our city. Question about the upstairs cafe. Will that be open to the public or is that something that's just for the building or for the, you know, for the medical offices only? Yeah, it's meant, intended to be just for the okay. users of the building. Okay. Well, I don't think we're going to have a car throwing people out, <laughs> but it's, it, it is intended for the service of the building. Okay. Thank you. Question for you. On the height that you're asking, is that because of additional parking requirements that you put in here? Or different, do you add additional parking? No, the height is within, we're not asking for a height beyond what's in the city code. It's, you're allowed to 120 feet and right. stories. We have 11 stories. Okay. And it's, it is to serve, to serve the, the uses. Within. So it's just for the land itself, the usage of the space? Correct. Okay. Joanne, I have a question for you, if I might. I realize there's a bond that's put up to ensure that it's built green, and I'm not doubting for any minute that it won't be. I'm just curious for our own, my own sake, knowledge. If for any reason it doesn't get approved or they don't, obviously they have to submit plans for the process. Is that correct? That's correct. How does the process begin before it gets to us that it already is meeting the requirements of the green standard? They have registered the building with the U.S. Green Building Council. It's a, it's a registration application and a process. They have come up with a lead checklist of all the, they've taken, there's, there's set items in the, in the uh, lead um, criteria. They go through each one and decide uh, based on their building plans, can they, are they going to achieve that? I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example for um, um, access, this is under location, there's, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight categories. I'll, we'll start with uh, location and transportation. So one of the credit points is access to quality transit. Uh, the um, lead, and these are all approved by lead. They say yes. They can they can get up to four of the six points that are available in that category. Uh, in uh, heat island reduction under sustainable sites, another section. Yet the lead has agreed that they can get two out of two possible points for that, and it, it, that's how they. So they just go down this whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the bond, it gets back to them after the building has been. So once you get that application, it's shown. Then you give the building permit. They build the building, and upon completion of the building and the CO temporary, then you give back the bond. Yes. After they've built the building, they go back to the U.S. Green Building Council. Uh, they do their process again of, of uh, evaluation. And if it meets the checklist, then they are issued an actual certificate. 
uh, and uh, we're looking to see that it meets that gold standard. I'm curious, how, Mr. Berger, how much time does this add to the construction time, pre-construction time? Because it's a wonderful, wonderful thought process, and I think it's great that we do it. But from a building standpoint, I'm curious, does it add much time to you? I, well, I don't know that I'm qualified to answer that question directly. Like, I can tell you that it, that not just the the additional items that go into the building certainly add a cost. Right. And going through the process, there's an application fee, and it's actually it's actually quite quite a significant cost. In other jurisdictions that I represent clients, they don't have these incentives, and folks actually want to build green buildings, but they don't get them certified because there's no tangible benefit, and it, sometimes it could be fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 just to go through the process. Hmm. So it, it, it's not a cheap process. It probably adds more cost than time, but I think over time, those costs in energy Get efficiency sure. and sustainability of the building will, will come back to the, to the owner. Um, and, and again, just to, to circle back on your question, obviously you, the, the Green Council can't confirm that all these items have been met until the building is complete. Plus. But we're tied to a site plan. This approval is tied to a site plan, right. and those elements are incorporated into that site plan. So for now, you have that level of comfort that the plan you're approving does contain all those elements. And then, obviously, for, to get a building permit for that plan, we have to follow it. So. No, I think the initiative yep. is fantastic. I commend you for it. Thank for you. your client. Com commend him, yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions? Commissioner Weinberg? <clears throat> um, yeah, a couple of comments that I'm, I'm not picking on this project, but for our uh, green incentive program in general. But I do want the attorney to know that when you said that this commission took the lead several years ago. I know you were spelling that L-E-E-D. That did not go over my head, so very clever. Um, there's a bond posted, and uh, they, if the building doesn't get certified, the bond is forfeited. At that point, is that the extent of the penalty? It, do they still get a CO? Yes. So it, conceivably, for 5%, of the cost of the project, they, that penalty, they could have a building that received this variance that is not actually LEED certified. I mean, that is a risk that we are taking. Is that correct? Well, if I can add to, if I can add to that, as uh, Mr. Mar Marrero pointed out, since the LEED components, the actual construction elements and special uh, environmentally sensitive components are part of the site plan, they have to com they have to complete those things, otherwise they have a site plan violation that they'll have to deal and with. I, and I understand that. I'm thinking of the future. So, um, and again, not picking on this project, but let's say that the cafe closes in two years, and all those nice, fresh, very locally grown rooftop vegetables, that garden is dead, um, and the Florida native plants for lot coverage that they were required to plant aren't watered. And basically, the building, the upkeep, is there a lead by the U.S. Green Building Council? Is there a, is there a continuing recertification program? I mean, uh, how do we know that this building is going to be green in six years? That's a, really a generic question for any. Uh, so those would be site plan violations? The items that you spoke about, if they violated those, and then we would have code enforcement process to deal with that. They would become code well, violations at that well, point. Well, that... Okay, so even the rooftop garden. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Joanne, just to further with that, I would assume that during the course of construction, a majority of what I'm hearing are part of the construction process in terms of the water, the sewer, the heating, the elements, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously the building could never get completed without meeting 90% of these requirements, the only thing that would be left without could be the rooftop. So all the major components pertaining to construction, savings, heating, electric, utilities or such, that would go in during the course of construction. So during the inspection process, it probably wouldn't pass inspection at certain levels without complying with these. Is this correct? That's correct. All these items will be in the building permit. That's what okay. I'm saying. So the point is the building would never get to the finish point without meeting most of these requirements along the way. And speaking of that, if, if I could, um, and Mr. Marrero, you may not be familiar with them, but if you are aware of, and Joanne, you mentioned some of them, and maybe the prior applicant can speak to them because they're at platinum level, but I think it's always valuable for people to hear the type of things 
the checklist that sometimes it's a cistern that collects rainwater for your um, restrooms. There's a bunch of really incredible things. Sometimes it has to do with um, better insulation by you can actually plant grass on the roof. I mean, there's so many different things. Maybe you know a few that you're doing in your building and some that were done in the platinum building because people should hear the kind of things that can be done. Yeah, I think just to give an example, what, what Joanne mentioned, you all spoke about the, the roof and the locally grown vegetables being used in the building. That's probably one of the more unique and innovative aspects of this building to sort of make it exciting and, and unique. But some stuff that's very common that I've seen used in lots of buildings that's being done here, energy efficient light bulbs. They may cost more when you buy them, but they last longer, and they're better for the environment, and over the course of time, save money and efficiency. Uh, air conditioning units, buying them all at the more efficient rates. These are little things that one alone doesn't maybe change the world, but cumulatively have an impact. The kind of materials you use, a big component of this is using materials in construction that are environmentally friendly, some recyclable materials, things like that, some of which, of course, the rooftop thing you see, everyone's aware of it, it's, it's a cool element. Some things you don't see, they're internalized, but have a profound impact. I mean, there's, there's a list of, of, of 50, 60 different things that we could talk about, but there's just a wide array of different options. Thanks. And I know if it's a building that was, uh, if the site had a prior building on it that was demolished, if you repurpose all of those materials, you get a lot of points as well, instead of hauling them off into some landfill somewhere. Right. And in fact, I, I can give you an example. Just recently, the city of Miami Beach adopted an ordinance that you get benefits in how quickly you can demolish and process a building permit if you recycle the materials used from demolition instead of just wasting them. It's another thing that can be done. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Okay. Could I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Holtzberg? Yes. Commissioner <laughs> Landman? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Weissman is absent. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, City Attorney, we have first reading this evening. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The final quasi-judicial item 7D, resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, granting conditional use approval to allow a building height of 12 stories and 129 feet 8 inches, where a maximum height of 12 stories and 120 feet is permitted by code for a medical office building at 2801 Northeast 213th Street, City of Aventura, in the MO Medical Office District, and providing for an effective date. Okay, could I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Narotsky. Second? Second. By Commissioner Terry Halsberg. Joanne, please. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I've been sworn in, would like to enter the staff report into the record. The applicant, KVVS Investors LLC, is requesting conditional use approval to permit a height of 12 stories and 129 feet 8 inches for development of a medical office building at 20, uh, sorry, 2801 Northeast 213th Street, where a maximum height of 12 stories and 120 feet is allowed by code in the medical office zoning district. And staff is recommending approval of this application. I'll put up the aerial and, and location plan. This building is located at the um, northeast corner of at Northeast 28th Avenue and Northeast 213th Street, and it's immediately to the north of the building that was just discussed. It is a 1.62 acre vacant parcel. It has frontages on both uh, Northeast 213th Street and New Northeast 214th Street. I'll show you the area. It's a busy street. Yeah, this is the <laughs> this is the parcel that was subject of the last application. And this lot is a vacant lot just immediately to the north of that. Um, the applicant is proposing to construct a 12 story, 114,614 square foot uh, medical office building with a pharmacy and surface parking on the first uh, level, six levels of structured parking, and five levels of office space. This is what the building uh, is proposed to look like. This is the. This is the one I was referring. Here's the elevation on um, 
northeast at 213th Street. This is the structured parking. There's a, an open a landscape plaza level on the, on, for the um, office building. This is the rear elevation on northeast 213th Street. There's accesses to the site from both 213th and 214th Street. And a landscape plaza on the eighth level for use by building occupancy. The uh, applicant will be uh, dedicating a 10 foot road widening to the city as part of a site plan approval uh, on Northeast 214th Street and will be constructing uh, a road improvements on that street as well. Uh, the additional height is requested in order to construct more parking that is required by code based on the uses and the square footage of the building. 353 parking spaces are required by code where 472 are proposed for this building. Um, the top floor of the uh, parking level does uh, contain the mechanical parking lifts that, so you can stack two cars and the applicant will, will therefore be required to provide an, an agreement for installation and, and uh, operation of those parking lifts and that's required by city code section 3171. Um, staff has evaluated the application using the criteria for approval of conditional uses in section 3173C of the city code <coughs> and finds that the application does meet those criteria. Uh, staff is recommending at this approval with the following conditions that the plan submitted for building permits substantially comply with the plan submitted with this application for conditional use, that a building permit be obtained within 12 months of the date of the approval, failing which the approval will be null and void. The City Commission may, by resolution or, or motion, grant one extension of up to six months upon written request by the applicant and upon showing of good cause. The next condition is that any discontinuation of the approved conditional use for a period of 180 consecutive days shall constitute abandonment and shall rescind the approval of the conditional use. And prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant will provide to the city the following documents in form satisfactory to the city manager and the city attorney. The first is a recorded copy of a unity of title or covenant new of unity of title, and that's joining the um, eight lots now um, into one single building site. A recorded copy of the road widening to the city on Northeast 214th Street a recorded a release of a, an existing utility that runs uh, north-south through the site now, so that needs to be um, released before building can occur. A uh, recorded copy of the agreement for the installation and use of the mechanical parking lifts as required by our code section 3171. And the applicant will also be required to obtain a public works permit prior to issuance of a building permit for the improvements to Northeast 213th and 214th Street as shown on the approved plans. Prior to uh, issuance of a temporary certificate of occupancy or certificate of occupancy, the applicant will be required to complete those roadway improvements to the satisfaction of the city manager. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, we'll open this up to the public. Would the applicant like to speak, please? Mr. Vice Mayor, Commissioners, good evening. My name is Manny Sinolovsky. Delighted to be here. We concur with all of staff's uh, comments, recommendations, and conditions. I also want to take advantage and thank uh, staff, in particular Joanne and Donna, for being so patient and so, for being so supportive in the process. It's not an easy process, but we're here, and we're delighted with the uh, assistance that they and, for that matter, the rest of your team has given us. If you have any questions, we're here to answer. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions from the public to the applicant? Okay, we'll close the public. Are there any questions from the commission? It almost looked like there was some retail on the bottom of one of the renderings. Is it, did I see retail or is that also open office space? That is a proposed pharmacy on the, on the ground floor. That is allowed in the medical office district, but it's not a, a, a like a regular pharmacy or you know a, that you would you would normally see. This is um, limited to drugs and medical supplies, so it's not a regular CVS or or Walgreens with with all their items. It's only drugs and medical supplies, so it's use it's for use of the doctors in the 
in the building to, to get their patients their, their uh, prescriptions. And it's restricted only to pharmacies. Yes. Question of the, this is, I'm sorry, I was confused with the other one. This is the one that you needed the extra footage because of the parking, That's additional correct. parking? That's correct. Okay. And your thought process, <coughs> excuse me, for the variance being granted was what? It, it, it meets the criteria for approval that our code sets out in section 3173 uh, for approval of conditional uses and um, certainly the uh, extra parking will be a benefit to the building. Great. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Mr. Weinberg? It, <clears throat> I must have missed it. Um, what level of LEED certification is this? <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> Uh, but I, I do wish every new building would be certified at some level. So having said that, uh, let me ask you about the lifts. Are these the Klaus lifts? Yes, Commissioner. Actually, I, I'll, I'll be happy to answer questions regarding the Klaus lifts. But suffice it to say, the fact that the building isn't going to be certified either by the USGBC or the Florida Green Building Coalition uh, really doesn't imply that the building is not sustainable. Quite the opposite. We've been very careful to provide amenities and to provide improvements that, in effect, um, make the building extraordinarily sustainable, in addition to the fact that the building is going to meet the 2014 Florida Building Code, which is probably the greenest building code we've ever had in the state of Florida. So I don't want anyone to be disappointed if we don't tell you that it won't be certified. Um, we believe in sustainability. The building has a lot of elements that equal those that are being um, proposed tonight and others that have been completed. A, we're just not going to have the plaque, if you will, uh, but we know deep inside that we are. That being said, yes, the lifts are all Klaus uh, lifts, and if you're familiar with that particular product, uh, they're probably the premier um, system to be used uh, for, for lifts here in South Florida. I agree with you, and I, in my obsessive continuing research uh, and in the spirit of what you just said, the Klaus now has lifts. Obviously, it costs money, and it's not my money, but they now have lifts with the built-in electric charging stations. So I would encourage every building with parking to have the ability for electric cars to be charged in there as well. But they happen to have those now built right into the lifts. I don't know if you've seen them. We're familiar with them, and, and we agree with you. And there is a significant amount of, uh, of movement towards uh, uh, electronic or few alternative vehicles, and obviously we support that for sure. Thank you. Okay. I, I have a question. Yes. Commissioner Landsman. Thank you. Is there a terrace with some landscaping? There is. There okay. is. And, and, and again, this is a feature that we've uh, included, uh, not because we're looking to, uh, in effect, that get any kind of certification. It's just an amenity that allows the office users to have to as opposed to going down to the street level where we do have quite a bit of open space uh, and landscaping to literally uh, go to the eighth level and enjoy some great views uh, above the hustle and bustle, if you will, of the city. But that is a terrace that's open to the users in the building, whether it be the doctors or, for that matter, their clients. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Could I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Holtzberg? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Narowski? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Weissman is absent. The motion passes. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank you. City Attorney, could we have the ordinance read for the first reading? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, ordinance, item 8A, Ordinance First Reading, Ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending Ordinance Number 2014-10 which ordinance adopted a budget for the 2014-2015 fiscal year by revising the 2014-2015 fiscal year operating and capital budget as outlined in Exhibit A attached here to authorizing the city manager to do all things necessary to carry out the aims of this ordinance and providing for an effective date. Okay, do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Motion by Mr. Narotsky. Second. Second by Commissioner Landsman. Okay. Um, City Manager, do you have any comments on this? Yes. Explain this. This is the final budget amendment for the, actually the cleanup amendment from the previous fiscal year. Uh, for the general fund, it's $560,000. The majority of that is for 
the Community Development Department's budget for additional building inspection services, which is offset by the additional revenue, and that's about $360,000. And then we have an amendment for our Police Off-Duty Services Fund of $300,000. That is also offset by additional revenue, and that was uh, based on extra duty details that were requested by the hospital. Okay. I'd like to open this up to the public. Does anyone have any comments, questions regarding this? If not, we'll close the public. Commission, does anyone have any questions? Okay. If not, the roll call, please. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Holtzberg? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Weissman is absent. The motion passes on first reading. Thank you. I'd like to request the city attorney read the uh, second and final ordinance to be considered for the first reading. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, item 8B, this is a uh, first reading of an ordinance by the City Commission in its capacity as the Aventura City of Excellence School Board of Directors. An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending ordinance number 2015-04, which ordinance adopted a charter school operating and capital budget for the Aventura City of Excellence School for fiscal year 2015 to 2016, July 1 to June 30th, by revising the 2015-2016 fiscal year budget document as outlined in Exhibit A attached here too, authorizing the city manager to do all things necessary to carry out the aims of this ordinance and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Motion for approval by Commissioner uh, Hulsberg, second by Howard Weinberg. Okay, city manager, would you like to comment on this, please? This is a budget amendment to the charter school fund. Uh, as you recall, we carried over about $200,000 from the previous fiscal year, so we're allocating about 157000 of that amount to various items. The majority of them are to capital items. We're increasing our laptop replacements by $32,000 increasing our uh, smart board replacements by 35,000 and we're upgrading the entire school security camera system in, in the amount of $50,000. Thank you. Opening this up to the public, are there any comments or questions? If not, we'll close it. Anything from the commission? May I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Holtzberg? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Weissman is absent. The motion passes on first reading. Okay. City Attorney? Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Or, uh, next is item 9A, ordinances for second reading public hearing. 9A, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending Chapter 2, Administration of the City of Aventura Code of Ordinances, by amending Section 2371, Lobbyists, of Article 6, Lobbying Activities, to be consistent with the Miami-Dade County Ethics Code, by eliminating the lobbyist expenditure statement filing requirement for lobbyists that have made no lobbying expenditure during a given reporting period, and eliminating the payment of lobbyist registration fees by principals, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Final reading of the proposed ordinance. Okay. Do I have a motion? Motion. A motion made by Commissioner N. Barcone. Second. By Commissioner Narotsky. Okay. Are there any comments from the public? If not, we'll close it to the public. Any comments from the commission? <coughs> Okay. If not, a roll call, please. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Holtzberg? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Weissman is absent. The motion is approved on second reading. Thank you. Uh, City Attorney, the second ordinance. Thank you. Item 8B, final reading of an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending the legislative expense amount for the mayor and individual commissioners as provided for in Section 2.06 of the City of Aventura Charter from $6,059 to $8,059 per year, authorizing the city manager to do all things necessary to carry out the aims of this ordinance and providing for an effective date. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Landsman. Second. Second. By Commissioner Hulsberg. Uh, okay. Any comments from the public? Uh, we'll close the comment for the public. Anything from the commission? If not, 
Roll call, please. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Holtzberg? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Narosky? No. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Weissman is absent. The motion is approved on second reading. Okay. City Attorney, the final ordinance be considered for the second reading. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending the City Code by amending Chapter 18, Business Regulations, Taxes and Permits, by amending Article 4, Police Cost Recovery, at Section 1880, Recovery of Costs for Failure of Responsible Person to Appear on Behalf of Business, to authorize imposition of a minimum service fee in lieu of the recovery of all costs incurred in the by the City Police Department under circumstances in which a criminal prosecution is abandoned, dismissed, or fails as a direct result of the failure of a responsible person to appear in law enforcement or court proceedings on behalf of the owner or operator of a business establishment, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, providing for penalty, and providing for an effective date. Final reading of the proposed ordinance. Okay, do I have a motion? Moved. Motion by Commissioner Ann Cohen. Second. Second. By Commissioner Narotsky. Any comments open to the public? If not, any questions from the Commission? Uh, if I may ask you a question, City Attorney, uh, approximately two questions. Number one, what would the typical fines be for something like this, and how is the enforceability handled? The uh, service fee varies based on the amount of uh, time uh, expended by the police department based on the complexity of the investigation. Uh, uh, this uh, amended ordinance would allow a flat service fee of $200 to be imposed when recommended by the police chief based on the amount of time uh, used by the police department uh, and mitigating circumstances on behalf of the uh, uh, store owner or operator. And then the enforceability would the Enforceability be. is uh, through code enforcement and as liens on property. My understanding is that if an officer has to go when he's off duty, we have to pay a minimum of three hours for the, to cover his court cost? Is yeah, that that, that's according to our collective bargaining agreement. Yeah, okay. Correct. So that you feel the $200 would be sufficient to cover these expenses? Yes. Okay. All right, any other questions? If not, roll call, please. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Holtzberg? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Weissman is absent. The motion is approved on second reading. Okay. Uh, does anyone on the commission have any reports to make tonight? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Thank you. Um, Tell us about your baby, Dippy? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I just want to give some updates. It's mostly for people watching at home as there is a limited audience here. But um, last Saturday on October 31st, we had a wonderful and successful Halloween and movie event at Founders Park. We had more than 4,700 uh, people attend the event. It was a big hit. So we hope to continue this over and over throughout the years. And, you know, it's a safe place for kids to go do some trick-or-treating, watch a movie, be with their families. And so we're very proud of that event. And we have some other upcoming events uh, that we want to make sure that the residents know about. Um, this uh, uh, Sunday, November 8th, Founders Day, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary from 12 to 5 p.m., Family activities for the husbands. There's going to be football, uh, watching, food trucks, lots of activities. Um, so that's coming up. We also have Veterans Day ceremony here at Government Center at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, November 11th. Um, we're going to honor our veterans. And last but not least, to keep the celebration going for our founder, uh, for 20th anniversary, we have our concert at Founders Park. That's for residents. We mailed out uh, uh, passes to residents. They can bring up to six guests. So we hope to see a good turnout. Uh, guess who will be performing? So we hope that our residents will take advantage of these opportunities and, uh, and enjoy. Thank and you. The, the football is for husband and wives, just to clarify. Correct. Right. I just have a brief comment. Um, being in the building business myself, I can appreciate, and I don't know how 
people if they understand the magnitude of what Joanne does on behalf of the city. But we just see a snapshot of these buildings and tonight what we've seen is probably a year's worth of work and thousands of hours. And I want to personally thank you because what you do for us and the way you simplify it for us and bring it down to a level that we all understand does not do justice to the complexity of the work that you do to get to that point. So I want to personally thank you very much for the work you do for us. Second, and thank you, Joanne. And the, the, I, I'm not, I, don't quote me on this, but I'm not sure if you guys are the first ones in Miami-Dade County to hit the lead platinum. Second, first one in the city. So I, that's a, a great uh, accomplishment. I have some friends who are in that area and, and do the certification and they tell me how stringent and uh, how much of an investment in time and money to get that lead platinum status. So congratulations on that. That's a, a great accomplishment. And to add to that, you don't have to pay Alan tonight. He didn't do a thing. <laughs> Are there any other comments from the public at all? Anyone like to speak? If not, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. That's it. The meeting is adjourned.